So I just want to describe this little model. So it's a random tumble particle with bounded rates, and this work is done with Shakuntala Chatterjee, who you know is a faculty at SNBO Center. Okay. So um, all of you know much more about this topic, but I'll do my give you my ten cents or two cents. So uh, we're thinking of a particle, which is a random tumble particle that is uh, on an infinite line. That is, this particle is characterized by its position on an infinite line, and it has two internal variables, uh, an internal variable which takes two values, plus or minus. So the plus particle is the a right mover. That is, it goes some distance rightwards with a speed v plus, but it can change its internal state with a rate gamma plus. And similar rules are there for the left mover. That is, it moves leftwards with a rate v minus and changes its state at rate gamma minus. Okay. So um, these uh, distributions for the right and left movers, uh, one can write down how that behaves. So in general, these uh, rates depend on space and time. But today, I will just assume that they are dependent only on space. Okay. So then the distribution of uh, these uh, uh, probability distribution right and left movers is given by these equations. The first term is due to the speed, and the last two terms are due to the tumbling. rate. Okay. But before we come to the space dependence, let's consider the simplest thing which has been studied a lot, which is that the, if the rates, all the rates are homogeneous in space. So as is well known, if that is the case, then there's no stationary state. And mean displacement increases linearly in time. The variance or the mean square displacement is slightly more complex, uh, complicated behavior in the sense that at short times, if initially I have both right and left movers, then sigma square increases uh, st square. But if we have only left movers or right movers, then it's TQ. But at longer times, in any case, there's a crossover from these things to T, provided both tumbling rates are non-zero. If either of them is zero, then sigma square becomes a constant. And that's simply because if uh, there's no tumbling, then after some time, particle simply uh, is uh, moving deterministically, and therefore there's no uh, sigma square added to it. OK, so that's the homogeneous rates thing. And as I said, there's no stationary state. But for non-trivial stationary states have been obtained if these rates are space dependent. And uh, uh, these have been studied in various contexts. OK, but it is also very, very well known that for arbitrary speeds and tumbling rates, the expression for the stationary state is given by this expression. And it exists provided the prefactor that is the normalization constant is finite. So this is all very well known. OK, and uh, however, the typically rates chosen in these studies are not bounded. So, for example, uh, this is uh, from an experiment on a photokinetic bacteria. That is the bacteria in which you shine light. You shine more light, it goes with a faster speed. But of course, you know, you cannot keep shining any amount of light. It will not keep going faster and faster. At some point, this speed will saturate. Okay? So in any case, you just expect intuitively also that the rates should be bounded. They cannot just keep increasing indefinitely uh, in space either. Okay, so that's basically the motivation for our work. Okay. So we chose these bounded rates for v plus and v minus and gamma plus and gamma minus. There are lots of uh, parameters, v0, v1, gamma0, gamma1. But the important parameters for us are simply the, the scale at which you go from linear tan hyperbolic to a constant or the homogeneous rates, which are u inverse and g inverse. Okay, So that's the sort of important ones. So if I just work with non-negative u and g, then one can show that stationary state exists for all of them except uh, when u and g is 0. That is the case when anyway the uh, rates become homogeneous. Okay? And then one can also write down the exact expression because of uh, previous work that I cited. One can write down the distribution. It turns out to be in terms of a hypergeometric function, which is not particularly illuminating, but still one can sort of work, I mean, you know, look at it carefully. And we find that the tails of the distribution are either exponential or double exponential form. Close to the origin, we find that, the, or, or rather the origin, it could be a minimum or a maximum. And uh, uh, if I assume that, so if it's a minimum, you know, something like this, uh, then that suggests that perhaps there are more modes of the distribution. So if I assume that at most it could be a bimodal distribution, then we find that this is the line which separates where we have a unimodal distribution and here we have a bimodal distribution. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say about the stationary state, but we also looked at the uh, mean square displacement. So we start with a particle uh, at some arbitrary x dot. And then we find that the, uh, this uh, sigma square could have these three sort of uh, answers. It could increase monotonically towards the stationary state. It could be non-monotonic, non-monotonic, or it could sort of flatten and then again approach the stationary state. 
The reason is simple, physically. If I start with the location of the particle, which is uh, you know, much, much smaller than where these rates become homogeneous, then this is turned more, it's seen in homogeneous rates. And therefore, you expect the uh, approach to the station state occurring non, uh, monotonically. But if x0 is much, much larger, then initially, because it's seeing homogeneous rates, for which, as I said already, the sigma square should increase. So that's what this is. And then at some point, it realizes that there are rates which are inhomogeneous and localizing, and therefore it comes back, OK? And in this case, when, uh, so this is a, uh, the case when tumbling rates were not approaching asymptotically zero. If tumbling rates asymptotically approach zero, in that case, again, I cited this result already, that sigma square becomes a constant initially uh, uh, for the homogeneous rates. So it becomes a constant a little bit, and then after that, again, it approaches exponentially fast uh, uh, towards the true stationary state. OK, so uh, we wanted to understand the full dynamics also of our model, but uh, that doesn't seem possible for arbitrary case. But what we could do is to consider one uh, limiting case, which is the one in which uniform, because the speed is uniform, and the tumbling rates are as a, a vary as a step function. So this uh, has been considered by some of you already, but uh, starting at or the location is only at the origin. So we wrote down the exact Green's function equation for, the full mo uh, for this uh, limiting case. And uh, I find it cute in the sense that uh, generally I don't encounter equations which have delta functions with coming with the coefficients. So uh, it was interesting, at least for me. And, uh, but however, we could find the full Green's function just invoking the usual uh, properties that is the function should be continuous and should we have finite discontinuities, both at x equal to 0 and x equal to a. OK, so analyzing this, we find that the, uh, the, the variance which increases or saturates until the mean displacement of the homogeneous case hits zero. That's because, you know, it's a step function. So uh, uh, it sees a change at the origin. So what this one can show also, and, but that's what something you expect intuitively as well. And for the general case, simulations are consistent with uh, saying that this mean displacement should be of the order of u inverse or g inverse. For the step function tumbling case, we uh, find exponential relaxation to steady state. And if the uh, non tumbling rates are non-zero, then this is how it uh, decays. And this, I think, is known. And uh, 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 OK, uh, for sigma square, if tumbling rates are 0, then we see a slightly different expression. For general case, we don't know relaxation time scale. How does it go? But uh, yes. OK, so that's all I wanted to say. So we consider RTP with bounded rates as it's a more physically sensible thing, we think. And we see different qualitative shapes, although physically it's clear what's going on. And perhaps one could explore other choices. And I had discussion about uh, this is a special case of a model, which is when we have uniform tumbling and it corresponds to mod exponential. But yeah, apparently, it's easy. But the equations I had were very, very complicated. But I look forward to seeing whoever has the answers. And experiments are, of course, welcome. Thank you very much. Any more questions? in your mean square displacement is always you see that it's non-decreasing? Uh, long term, it's uh, decaying towards the stationary. Or, 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 are you talking about homogeneous rates? Yeah. I think you're talking. So that long term is, yes, T, as far as, I mean, for homogeneous rates, yes, it's T, mm -hmm. except if the tumbling rate becomes 0, then it's a constant. OK, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you.